Thank you, folks. If you have your Bibles with you this evening, would you open them to the book of Philippians? Chapter 4 of the book of Philippians. <coughs> if you're able to stand out of respect to the word of God, please do so. We'll read from chapter 4 of the book of Philippians. Philippians 4. You'll hear a lot of rattle, and I'll wait till you catch up. Verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. And then go down to verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And then going down to verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Three beautiful promises there. May God bless the reading of his word. Bow your heads for a moment. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Speak to us through it tonight, and we'll thank you for it. Amen. You may be seated. I grew up hearing the days we're living in right now, referred to as the dog days. How many of you remember, know what these are? These are the dog days. I remember hearing that you should watch out that these days were the worst days to get an infection in a cut if you didn't care for it. I don't know if that's true or not, but I heard that, and I have always been more careful with such things during this time of year. Webster says the dog days is that period between early July and early September when the hot, sultry weather of summer usually occurs in the northern hemisphere, or that it means a period of stagnation or act inactivity. But dogs aren't the only creatures that are uncomfortable in oppressive heat, are they? <laughs> uh, I've been pretty uncomfortable myself the last while. So why did dogs get singled out for these hot days? Well, actually, it wasn't your English setter or your Brittany being referred to here in the dog days, but what is called the dog star, which is also called Sirius. The Greeks and the Romans often associated it rising in the sky during these hottest days of summer, and so they called this dog days. had nothing to do with the dog down here. Whatever their origin, these days are certainly hard to deal with. Thank God for air conditioning. <laughs> I have found also that the cancer drugs I've been taking make these especially hard drugs for me. I play out easier than usual. I have trouble getting my breath. And I just don't feel as good as I might if it were 70 degrees out with low humidity. Hang on, those days are coming. I hope. 
soon. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to wish my life away, but we can't get through the dog days quick enough. And with the dog days comes the height of hurricane season. And I pray that central Pennsylvania will be spared this year. So I was thinking about the dog days. This thought came to me as I was thinking about what to preach about uh, this evening. That the three letters that spell dog should remind me to D, depend, O, on, and G, God. So I'm kind of looking at the dog days as these are the days to depend on God. Sometimes people have a tendency to forget about their relationship with God during the summertime. So much more to do in the summer. With summer getaways, concerts, fairs, parades, car shows, ball games, camping trips, on and on it goes. Sometimes we can end up putting God on the back burner during the summer if we're not careful. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to do any of those things, but I always ask people sometimes, where do you go to church when you're away doing some of those things? Uh, historically, most churches across America have less people in them during the summer than at any time of the year. It's been that way. It's not something new. Sunday schools always had a summer slump. Of course, you have to still have a Sunday school to have a summer slump which many churches don't have anymore. Thank God we still have a, thun a Sunday school. Support ours and try to keep it going as long as we can. But don't ever allow you, yourself to put God or the church on the back burner. No matter what is going on in your life, or you will be the loser. And we need Jesus every bit as much in August as we do in March. Don't we? And even though August may present us with a different set of challenges than what March does, every day is a challenge in some way. And Jesus can help us to meet whatever our challenge is. We all have different challenges. So I challenge you to depend on God, not just through the dog days of August, but depend on God to get you through the dog days of life. And the older we get, the more challenging the dog days of life can become as we leave the energy and exuberance of youth behind. Remember what that was? <laughs> the golden years aren't always what they are cracked up to be. Amen. does take all your gold just to pay your medical bills. Definitely. Now, these three verses we read as our scripture reading from Philippians 4, have always been three verses that I have loved and that I have come to rely on through the dog days of life. And the older I get, especially now dealing with cancer for over six and a half years now, the more precious these verses 
have become to me. I want us to consider them this evening. First in verse 11, Paul says, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith or therein to be content. When he says state there, he isn't referring to Pennsylvania, Maryland, or West Virginia. Instead of one of those states, he's referring to whatever condition. I am in. Now, I think most of you know that the book of Philippians, along with the book of Ephesians and Colossians and Philemon, are what are called Paul's prison epistles. As they were written when Paul was in a prison somewhere. Paul was no stranger, as you know, to prison. If you're familiar at all with the happening of the book of Acts, it's hard not to remember and to be inspired <coughs> by how in chapter 16, God set Paul and Silas free from a prison in this city of Philippi as they prayed and sang praises to God at midnight. Remember the miraculous earthquake that opened the, the jail doors for them and uh, caused their uh, chains to fall loose? Uh, the converted... Jail, uh, Philippian jailer who was scared to death that he was going to be killed. They were all going to get away, and Paul said, don't worry, we're, we're here. And he got converted because of what he saw that night. He and his family were undoubtedly a part of this congregation when Paul wrote these words to them from another jail time. Now, if you find it hard to be content with your situation, whatever it is, can you somehow fathom the idea of Paul being content in prison? Can you be content in prison? Paul was. He said he was. He went on in verse 12 to say he knew how to be abased or he knew how to abound. To be abased means to be humbled. The word was used in classical Greek to refer to a river that is running low. Have you felt like a river running low lately through the dog days? Paul said he knew how to be either full or hungry. He knew how to abound or to suffer need. Been there and done all those things, he said. Notice he said there, that he had learned to be content in whatever state it was that he found himself in. How do you learn how to do that? You do so by learning that your relationship with Jesus can't be changed by your circumstances unless you have a pity party, unless those, let those circumstances change you. That's the only way it can happen. Paul had learned that he could face any kind of experience, both the pleasant as well as the unpleasant ones, content that they could not steal from him 
his higher happiness that he had found in Christ. See, to Paul, happiness wasn't centered around whether he had a full belly or was hungry, whether he was free or in prison, whatever it was, that, that, that wasn't what it was about. Have you learned that yet? I hope you have. It's hard to learn. But depending on God will indeed get you through the dog days of your life. But in order to do that, you have to learn to be content with whatever lot life has dealt to you, with whatever is going on in your life, especially those things that you can't change. You have to learn to be content in spite of them. The second verse we read was verse 13, where he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Linda has it up in our living room, and I sit in my chair and look at it every day, and I'm reminded of that fact, and say, Lord, I can. I can. I can't be strong for all the things I must face through Christ who empowers me to do so. Where's your strength come from? As you get into the dog days of life, no matter how much you exercise, no matter how good of a diet you're on, physical strength tends to wane, doesn't it? We can all relate to the old saying that the old gray mare just ain't what it used to be. But it's not necessarily just physical strength that Paul is talking about here. It's spiritual strength as well as emotional strength. He's saying here that God gives him the, the strength <coughs> to do whatever things that he is required to do. Now, that didn't mean he was saying that he could bench press 250 pounds at his age. I'm sure he couldn't. But by that, he meant that whatever challenge he faced, he believed his God would give him the strength to face it, to deal with it, and to go through it, to get through it. I just wonder how many millions of people over the centuries have quoted this beautiful verse and found strength in it and used it to help them to get through some kind of hard event or some kind of struggle that they were dealing with in their life. I certainly can't do everything I used to do, but through Christ, he can empower me in some way to get done what I need to do. And remember, there's a difference between what you need to do and what you want to do. Big difference. I hope this promise that you can do all things that you need to do through Christ strengthening you will get you through the dog days of summer and the dog days of life. The third verse we read was found there in verse 19. It says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What a beautiful promise that is as well. First, we need to be clear that it does not say that God will supply all our wants there. It says needs. 
My God shall supply all your needs, not wants. And there's a tremendous difference between our needs and our wants. I don't need to drive a Porsche. But I have need of a way to get to work. A way to get to the store, to the doctor, or to church. And since I have a need of one, God will provide me with one, this promise says. Now, that doesn't even mean that I even have to have a car. Could be a bus or a friend that takes me or a bicycle or God could even give me good legs to walk. You know, the only people that walk anywhere for something is to exercise anymore. It's below people to walk to go somewhere. Uh, but so we walk to exercise. Well, we could walk to do stuff like that. But God will supply a way for my need to get to those places that I need to get to. But like I said, it doesn't have to be a Porsche. Uh, my cousin, Christy, her son just gave her an old Porsche. And she doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, it's an old one. And uh, she said, uh, I, I, uh, I don't want it, but what do you do when your son gives you something like that? She drove it to church the other day, and uh, the preacher said, whose car is that? He said, uh, I didn't think that uh, teachers made that much money. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we associate a Porsche with a lot of money, don't we? But we don't need a Porsche. I don't have to eat filet mignon or lobster tails or even pork chops. But God will supply me with enough food to sustain me if I keep my trust in him and pay my tithe. Many of you remember the day when good old baloney wasn't so bad. Still isn't bad, especially dear baloney. Uh, but don't expect God to meet any of your needs, though, if you don't give back to him your tithe. There are all kinds of people trying to claim that promise for themselves, but they won't even tithe. Psalm 50, verse 10, says that God owns the cattle upon a thousand hills, that means that God's resources are unlimited and that he certainly is able to meet whatever your needs may be. And it isn't that God needs your tithe, but you need to honor God with your tithe as a way of proving to God that you trust him. And when you do that, then when you do have a need... You can say to God, I'm putting you first. What we sing, Bill Gaither's song tonight, all my possessions and all my life. Jesus is Lord of, of all. Uh, don't sing that if you don't tithe because you'd be lying. But God has promised there to meet our needs if we'll just depend on God through the dog days of, of our life. Now, I hope you've learned to be content in whatever state that you find yourself. I think most of us are there. I hope you've learned that you can do all things that you need to do through Christ, which strengthens you. How many of you, that's one of your favorite verses? 
Yes, a whole bunch of folks here tonight. And I hope that you have learned that if you're willing to put God first in your life and trust him, he can and he will supply all of your needs. What a beautiful promise that is. Depend on God. Next time you think about dog days, think of those three letters. Depend on God. Depend on God to get you through the dog days of August <coughs> and the dog days of life. Sometimes the dog days of life can be worse than the dog days of August because they continue on through December and February and what have you, the problems. The, hopefully the dog days of August will soon be behind us. Uh, and I say that knowing my mother always told me, don't wish your life away. <laughs> but still, I'll be glad when the dog days of August are behind us. But depend on God to get through these dog days of August and the dog days of life as well, whenever they occur, whenever they try to get the best of you, whenever they try to overpower you, whenever they cause you to scratch your head, to be disillusioned, to wonder what you're going to do next, to wonder what you're going to do to get through this, over this, past this, whatever fits, depend on God. Dog, depend on God. Uh, pretty simple, but I hope you'll remember it down through this week. Depend on God. Let's stand. bow our heads and let's join together in a word of prayer and if you're there if you're up against something God will help you to get through it if you're dealing with something that you can't change learn to be content with it if you have a need that you're unable to meet Trust God, and he will help you to meet it. I believe those things. I hope you do too. How many of you do believe those things? If you do, say amen. amen. God wants you to hear it, and when remind yourself of that this week if you come up against something. Let's join together in a closing word of prayer. Phil Snyder, would you please dismiss us?